episode two of Makers at Home with the one and only Cameron Esposito. Um, I'm really excited for Cameron today because she has been getting me through this quarantine. She has a book that has just come out, Save Yourself. Um, she's a comedian. She is the host of, you know, she's on TV shows and um, she is the the podcast host of Query, uh, which is something that I love and adore. Um, so we're going to go live with her today to get a sense of what is getting her through and how this book tour is going. So here we go. There she is. Okay, it's waiting. Cameron, you're coming. Connecting. Oh my God, that was almost impossible. Huh. I mean, so Cameron. hard. Oh, that was so, so hard. hard. And I had to trash my intro and I felt like I was on a roll. I felt <laughs> like my second intro wasn't half as good, but here we are. And not only that, Cameron, but I dressed up for you. I just want you to know, I, I have been in sweatpants and a sweatshirt for two weeks and I was like, I'm putting on a jean jacket. Well, you look really nice. I yes. myself have been ironing and wearing a button down shirt every day just because it's like, it's, get, it's putting me in some sort of mental place. It's There's doing some something. It's helping in some way. It's just got to be true. You mean ironing? Helping. Ironing is helping in some way? Say that like again. just just the feeling of getting ready for a day, even though the day has been, you know, not some of my top favorite days, but just trying to have a day. Exactly. I mean, before speaking of that, like, I just want to say that... Um, and I know it's sort of weird being a public figure that all of a sudden everyone knows about what's going on in your life. But I do know that Katie, your girlfriend, has been sick and I hope she's doing okay. Thanks. Yeah. I mean, it's always difficult to make decisions about what to share. But I, I think that right now, um, I don't know. For me, it's like I, there's two things. I'm a person too, and I'm trying to figure out how to um, do my job, which is technically to promote a book right now. Yeah. even though that literally feels like the weirdest thing in the world. Um, and then the other thing is that, you know, I, I, um, I live with somebody who's immunocompromised and I, I felt like I was hearing from a lot of people in my age group sort of a dismissive attitude about this affecting us like in a personal way. Like it was like, well, maybe we'll know someone affected, but it won't affect us. And I just, because I, you, you know, because I know Katie, I just know that's not true for everybody in my age group. And um, so she is, she's not feeling so hot. She's been in bed for a bunch of days. Um, sometimes she eats some soup and that's what's going on over here. Uh, I know that's true for, you know, a bunch of households where folks are sick um, or in a caretaking position. Right. Well, as, and, and as you said, you wrote a beautiful Refinery29 piece that sort of said that it was inspiring. You know, you, you said Katie is her own person and she's taking her own you know, ownership and agency around this. And, and your role is to be there to say, you know, I'm there for you. I hope you're OK and, you know, be her partner in crime. So it sounds like you're doing a good job. Oh, that's really nice. I mean, I'm trying, you know, it's a, it's, I think for me, sometimes it can be like a daily struggle to stay in my own business yeah. because I uh, do care about other people in the world. And I do care about the, you know, the things that happen for my partner, my family members. And, you know, I can sometimes forget that I have to, like, these are autonomous people that are adults. They know what they're doing. Doesn't mean you can't worry about them, but, but um, right now, maybe some of the best stuff we can do is to worry about ourselves. Yeah. You know, and then also like our communities. Yeah. Um, maybe we even need to save ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, can, did you ever, the, the name of this book? I know it's like we decided on it, you know, two years ago or whenever you come up with the title for a book, it's not as the book is released. <laughs> so, um, I don't even know what to say about it. I don't even know what to say about it. It's beyond. It's beyond. It's beyond. It does look like it's going to have some slightly different advice in it, given the current pandemic. It's really just about like well, growing up super Catholic in 
uh, thinking that you're going to be a priest and then ending up a gay stand-up comic. So it's like just slightly <laughs> different information. Well, it's true. Um, and, and I do have to tell you, you know, usually interviewers get on and they're like, you know, I've read the whole book. I'm on page 110. Oh, great. Um, so no spoiler alerts on this call, okay? I'm on learning lesbianism. Uh-huh. I mean, okay. at the end, I am gay and I do become a stand-up comic. Cameron. Damn it. <laughs> I thought you were going to become a priest. Yeah, no, it's, Forget it. it really does end in, uh, and it also, like, this, one thing that's funny is, this is the sunniest room in my apartment, but this is a framed photo of me. You know, like, this is me. I'm in a Chicago magazine and when this, my parents get really excited when I'm in Chicago press, because that's like the only press that exists to them. They're from Chicago. It's like, if you're in the Trib or like Chicago magazine, like forget it. And so my point is um, my dad, when I was in Chicago magazine the first time with a photo, he framed it and gave it to me for Christmas. So anyway, now I'm just in, like I look like the kind of guy who has pictures of himself framed on their wall. And you know what? I do. <laughs> well, but what your head is actually covering is something that I know your audience has been really interested oh, in. Oh, yeah. Which is your color-coded bookshelf? Yeah, it's color-coded bookshelf. Um, that's Katie's doing. That's, I didn't do that. You didn't. That's, a, I have a, I, she's a very patient person. So you iron, <laughs> but you don't color-coat your books. No, but I love that they're color-coded. It's it makes amazing. Me, it makes me perfect. have joy. Yeah. I have a new project now. I mean, I, you know, I got time. And I never thought of that. I mean, if you look at my bookshelf, nothing is color-coded. It's just all just brown. Anyway, I know. I, 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 I mean, color. She also, you can't see from here, but I have like a Pez collection and she put the Pez in a color-coded way. It, she's, it's incredible. What, what I'm dealing with here is incredible. <laughs> Um, all right. So tell me a little bit. I want to talk about the book and then I want to do your three things that are getting you through. Uh, okay. So first of all, I have to say as a straight white woman, you know, I know that you I read that you wrote this book because you wish you had had this for yourself. And, you know, you hope for queer youth that it will be an inspiration and others. But I mean, I, I can't stop reading this thing. It is. Oh, that's great. You know, it speaks to me. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. You know, I, f I feel like, of course, the some of the themes about my childhood are like, I felt like a really goony person. I felt super uncomfortable in my body. I had an eye patch because I had crossed eyes. I had a bowl cut, glasses, and braces. That is how you become a stand-up comic, by the way, that combination <laughs> of things. Um, and, you know, I just felt like an outsider, even though at times in my life, I would have maybe seemed like that was not the case. You know, in high school, I dated the captain of the football team, but I was gay. So I just mean like this thing that I think if you see the movie about high school, like the person that's, you know, that couple, they're, you know, the, the prom king and queen or whatever, but I was the mascot of the football team. And that, you know, that's what was going on in my life. So, um, but yet there's something yeah. universal in it. I mean, there, there is, is something universal. Yes. We all struggle in some way, right? We're all That's finding right. our identity. That's right. Yeah, we're all finding our identity. We're all trying to figure out who we are. We are all trying to figure out how to be confident in the person that we feel most comfortable being. And... So that's awesome. And we're also all trying to please our parents. We're all learning religion. I mean, I found that really fascinating. You know, it's, you know, you say you wanted to be a priest, but then there's this whole idea that in the Catholic church, which is obviously so opposed to so many things, um, <laughs> but, at the, but at the same time, there is this, you know, service component to it. Right. I mean, I think that I, there are some things about the faith that I was raised in that had a positive lasting effect on my life because they were ideas about what we're all doing here and what we're supposed to do with our time. That being said, I also, you know, I, I mean, this is, there's a strong language, but I consider this the hardcore Catholicism I was raised with to be a cult. And I also consider, um, you know, the colonialism that the Catholic church has, has, enacted the entirety in the entirety of its um, existence has had massive negative effects and still does, you know, so that's also when I talk about this book, sometimes straight folks um, will respond to this story because some of the religious stuff is, I think feels very extreme. Like, what do you mean? You went to a college where you couldn't come out. You could be kicked out of school for being gay. 
And I'm like, yeah, I mean, this happened in the early 2000s, but also this is still what it's like in the church. You know, this is not, these things haven't changed. It's still an organization that teaches women yeah. um, not to take accurate or adequate health care of our bodies. You know, you couldn't, if you're a straight person, you could not get contraception on my college campus or for anybody. But I just mean like, it's not just queer people that are affected negatively by the church. Um, yeah, there's, you know, I think it was like 85% of students at Boston College where I went live on campus and the campus um, health providers were not allowed to prescribe the pill. Like, I mean, that's wild to me, you know, to think about young women being put in that position. And luckily for me, because I'm queer, I got to kind of like have a moment of going, I'm not sure all of this is right. Right. And I think, you know, a lot of people maybe didn't, didn't get that op opportunity. I'm curious what your parent, what your parents reaction to the book has been. Oh, my parents read it, you know, in advance. My siblings did too. My siblings are also characters in this book. And um, two of my ex partners are characters and pretty substantial characters in this book, my first girlfriend, and then the first person I lived with. And they all read it before anybody else. Um, you know, my parents already know how I feel about all this stuff. Uh, right. because it's not I told like it them. was news to them. Yeah, um, because I told them. Uh, and something that was really wild in sending manuscripts to those two exes was that they, they both of them spoke to me about um, how positively they viewed our relationship and you know I also view those relationships as really positive I think not so many people in life get a chance to hear from like the person they dated you know 20 years ago and have that person be like by the way we're cool and like I wish you the best you know like but I, I got that opportunity which is really awesome so shout out to those two yeah that's amazing I yeah the, all I get are the posts on Facebook because that's the first thing you do right you, you you search your old loves and yeah. anyway um but what so that's interesting and what else I mean what would you say you learned most from writing this book I learned that I was a more lovable kid than I thought I was I like I said earlier I felt so awful about myself I felt a lot of shame about myself and here I'll show you this is this has been helping a lot. I'll show you, uh, you want to see a photograph? Like, like, uh, you know, this is a kid that I was. Oh my I'm goodness. basically wearing the same outfit. Oh my God, <laughs> look at that! You know, you and I- Is that a bandana in your hair? It's a bandana in my oh. hair. My eyes are a little Hi. crossed in this photo and I've got, uh, oh my I've got my glasses on and like classic facial expression of being just a little nerd. And, you know, I sort of got to re-encounter my younger self writing this book. And I realized that like, if I met this kid who was trying so hard to be themselves, I would love this kid. Like this would be my favorite kid. You know, I, I everything that I was doing was always just a little out of step with everyone else. And I think that I, that, I would have really appreciated that as an adult. And I just never felt that way before wish you could writing this book. Just, like reach out and just sprinkle a little fairy dust on these kids and say, it's yeah. yourself. Well, and also, you know, for me, like this is, this is, a, you know, this is this kid or whatever, but this is me. So the lesson I think is also that like, I am so tough on myself and I am my own, you know, worst, most, and, harshest critic. And by the way, people have said terrible things to me because, <laughs> because YouTube comments are, oh. or, or just hecklers and, you know, like yeah. whatever anybody has said to me, I've said 9,000 times worse things to myself in my head. Yeah. So if this kid was lovable, then I guess maybe, and this is, you know, very tender. You're catching me at a tender moment. I guess maybe I'm lovable now. Oh, you're so lovable. <laughs> I love you so much. Get enough of you. Um, in fact, I congrat this. I wake up in the morning and I get a little Cameron in my uh, Instagram feed, and I saw today that this became a bestseller. 
Yeah, it's officially on the indie bookstore bestseller list, which really means so much to me because the book tour was canceled, which meant that thousands of books were refunded, which meant that then people cared enough to go try and buy from indie booksellers the books that that those indie booksellers would have gotten to sell if I had this tour. So it just, it speaks so much to like uh, what we're doing for each other right now. Like I just, I, th that means people tried to buy it twice. You know, there's no stores even open. That means people had to like do complicated Googles. You know, I just feel like it's incredible. So, so I feel so happy I, I about it. I think that's a really important message right now because we are, at Makers, we're trying to shine a light on um, the Women's Prison Association and the WPA and their, you know, they help formerly incarcerated women get on their feet and let alone, you know, in, in normal life what that's like, let alone right now. And so we're doing that. And I love that you're really focusing in on indie booksellers. Um, and I'm just wondering if there's a specific website or because I think we all just go to Amazon. I mean, to be told, Cameron, and, and talk about hating yourself. I bought this on Amazon and <laughs> I don't think that we have to have any sh particular shade on anyone's on what anyone's doing to get through right now. So like if Amazon or like audible, if that's like, if you need, if you like need a distraction to be able to feel good and this book is helpful and that's your access point. Amazing. 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 Um, but also bookshop.org. Yeah. will match you with a indie bookseller that is selling this book. You can just go to bookshop.org and search for Save Yourself. Or there's a really great service I didn't know about before this called Libro.fm. And Libro.fm is the equivalent of Audible, but it tracks the sale through an indie bookseller. So both of those... Oops. You know... Um, oh, did... Did I just you, lost did you I lose for you? A second. I just lost you for a second. But oh, am I here? Me? Yeah, yeah. Both of those sites support right. indie booksellers, and also, you know, I, I, um, on my Instagram, I linked and mentioned all of the booksellers that were going to support me on this tour. So obviously, if there's an indie that you love that's near you, check that out. But if you don't have an indie that you love, you can, you can check and my Instagram books. and get more information. Yes, and buy other books, not just yeah. this book. Um, yeah. Samantha Irby has a book out today. Glennon Doyle's book is number one um, in the nonfiction space. And uh, I've been also doing these Zoom panels with queer memoirists. Oh, so if you go to my Instagram, you can see all of these other amazing authors and buy their books. There's just, there's a lot of information right now. And I, it's even, you can just, all you have to do is go to my Instagram. <laughs> well, I mean, I have to go, go to your Instagram. And then, you know, we, we're all, it, I think it's just a muscle. I think, you know, the muscle is, oh, I want a book. I'm going to go to Amazon. It's just a new muscle we have to learn. And the impact that you can have is huge. So I really, it's been exciting that you've been shining a light on it. And um, you're the best. Okay. Oh, I, know, I really appreciate I, I, you. I know I only get you for a little bit because you're having to reinvent your book tour. And I do <laughs> want to, and I'm so honored that we're a part of it. But I want to get to, what are the three things? Cameron that have been getting you through uh, phone calls with friends mm -hmm. I am calling multiple friends every single day I have a tendency if things are tough to get really into I'm the I'm the solution to my problems you know like I get very inward I don't want to have emotions I just want to keep working uh, but that's not what I have found out over time is that that causes a crash so I'm trying to stay really honest with myself about telling other people how I'm feeling. That's number one, call people, call people. Call. Um, and then uh, number two, I'm making giant amounts of food all at once. <laughs> then I take little bowls and I warm those bowls up. I cannot tell you how much this is improving my life. Wait, give me an example, like a big bowl of what? Like rice and beans, giant bowl of rice and beans, then add fresh veggies to it and warm that up so that you're not constantly cooking, which is exhausting, especially if you're the one making all the food, which I am right now. Great, it's really been killing me. You're right, it's, I'm like, even lunch, I'm like, what are we gonna do? Massive, make a giant pot of one thing. It's gonna help you out so much. Okay, call friends, I don't know. big batches. So far I'm Call in. friends, big batches. And um, I mean, I think that the, the final thing is like, 
I don't want to say this and sound heartless because this is not true for everybody. There is a way to do my job right now. I'm my job. My number one source of um, income is live performance. So that is canceled like for the foreseeable future. I've never been in this situation where I don't have any guaranteed income. But what I know is that like we have an enormous amount of resources in terms of technology and shared thought. So like if you feel that you're at the end of your rope because you can't figure out how to do the thing you used to do, it just might be a new thing. So trying to figure out how to do that thing, you know, it doesn't have to be like, I just feel like I've see, seen a lot of people talking about the hobbies that they're, yeah. that they're diving into and the knitting that they're doing. For me, I'm not there. I'm trying to figure out how to make money, you know, how to yeah. keep afloat as, a, as a, an independent business person. So whatever your business is, yeah. um, I, I hope for you that there's a way to do your job through this. I really hope for you. Um, I hope that for myself too. Well, can, is there a way, Cameron, because I mean, I was devastated that I couldn't go to your event in Brooklyn. And I'm wondering, are you thinking about do, oh, oh, are you gonna maybe do something? And I would pay my- Stay tuned. Oh. Um, I am planning on uh, like a digital, like a virtual um, stand-up tour. So that's the next thing that I'm hoping to do. Uh, next week, sorry, next week, talk about how folks can join that. Um, but I think, you know, like I said, I think there's, there's a lot of tools right now, focusing on the tools and the opportunity. Okay. Focusing there. Yeah. We've got calls. With calls, them. large batches, learning new tools. Okay. I'm, I'm so in. And <laughs> for me, number four is like, how can we support Cameron and in any way, <laughs> shape, that we, any way Makers is in. Oh, uh, man. So oh, thank you so much. Yeah. You, you sprinkle such joy when you're mm -hmm. making us laugh, when you're making us cry. You're just such a love. And I just want everyone to one more time. Yes. I'll have mine up too. Oh. Ah. <laughs> And I didn't I, get to sign any of them, so I signed one to myself. <laughs> Look, we're all doing the best we can. You know what I um, need to do? I have an idea. Sign, um, you can sign a book and take a screenshot. I'll put oh, that's it out genius. and I'll put it in my book. That's actually genius. <laughs> and charge me for it. <laughs> that's actually genius. I love that. Um, yeah, well, look, save yourself. Buy it through your indie bookseller. Let's keep indie books indie bookstores in business, and hopefully the book will be a fun and emotional and raw and light distraction. It, it, it is all of those things up to a hundred page one hundred and ten. I hope you don't <laughs> disappoint me for the rest. All right, Karen. Oh, you're so the good best. to talk to you. Thank, Thank you, you so much for your time. Well, take care. Bye. Bye. Ah. I love her so much, everyone. Thank you for being here at Makers at Home. And we have an upcoming one on Friday with um, Abby Wambach and Glennon Doyle. So don't miss that on Friday. And then in the following weeks, I have my little list here. We've got Cheryl Sandberg, Katie Couric, I Jen Poo, Tina Chen, Sint Marshall, and more. And thank you always to the Makers team. You guys are incredible. And uh, it's such a joy to work with you every day. Um, and of course, our GM, Lori, and Alex Wallace, and Guru Gorapin. Um, thanks, you all. And we'll see you on Friday at the next Makers at Home. Bye.